Hey there, Mission Control. Sorry, it's been a while. Got a lot of stuff to share with you. Let's jump in. We kind of had a really tough spell here lately and uh, had to explain why it's been so long since I put up a video. Uh, but I want to share some of the things we were able to get done uh, since I last spoke to you. First, we did decide to go with the shade cover on the building. Uh, that's a luminette is what it is. It's a, essentially a whole bunch of really small like aluminum foil pieces that they make. It's uh, purpose built for a greenhouse to do exactly what we're doing. It's a 50% shade cover and uh, it works really, really well. It did a great job on the inside. That was the last major thing we were dealing with. Uh, if you remember last time we spoke, kind of like, man, it's really, really hot. There's lots of stuff coming down. What are we going to do here to get shade in the building? And we put that up and man, it made a huge difference. So that's really good. We got a lot of stuff inside too to talk about. So let's jump over there and uh, go over those things. I guess we can start with some, some good news. First, any leafy green plant at all grows amazingly well in this system. Uh, the only thing we really had a problem with with the leafy greens twofold. One, uh, we have thrips out of control. Uh, we spoke about that before on the uh, I'm not a botanist. Uh, and then we also had white powdery mildew show up. So uh, those two pests are still in the aquaponic system. And you still have to deal with them. Uh, but you can see the growth here. This is parsley is just phenomenal. We got basil, sage is going nuts. I uh, got some chives as well, uh, thyme, all of them doing really, really well in the system. So I would say from that, that standpoint, things have been really good. But you might notice normally these shelves are covered uh, in microgreens. And right now they are definitely bare. So this is kind of the major reason why I haven't been able to do any videos for you lately. There's actually quite a few reasons why. Essentially, uh, well, bottom's line, bottom line up front, the bluff, B-L-U-F. The bottom line up front is we've had to shut down microgreens uh, and we're going to have to shut down the building for winter. In fact, we've already essentially started doing those things. Uh, microgreens, as of about a week ago, uh, we made our final delivery and uh, have stopped uh, the process of uh, redoing or um, succession planning with the microgreens were completely turned off. So uh, other than feeling like a giant kick to the stomach, uh, the reasons why that happened, we actually had a whole series of events, four major things. Uh, first, we had uh, an employee that we had actually, we made it to that point and things were looking really, really great. The employee was amazing, uh, a local, a uh, gal just out of high school, uh, really, really hard worker, learning, really excited about the system and the project. Uh, unfortunately, had some uh, personal uh, challenges at home uh, that took, took her away from the job, so she wasn't able to stay, so we, we lost her. Uh, in the same week, essentially, the head gasket on the Expedition, which is our delivery vehicle, blew. Um, then we had uh, a customer that we've been having uh, they just have decided to stop microgreens altogether, so we lost the customer. And then, if you recall, we were, we, we were almost to the point where we were break even and paying for everything, and everything was going to work out. We needed one big customer, and we were working on that customer um, in Portland, in the big city. And we put it, all the paperwork in, we did everything, and in the end, they decided not to go with us. So we weren't able to secure that customer. And all that happened essentially in the same week. Uh, and if any one of them would have happened by themselves, we could have recovered. But all four of those things happening in, in one week uh, just really knocked us back. So we had to sit down, talk through everything, look at the costs associated with running microgreens. And in the end, if we didn't have both those customers, the one that we lost and the one we didn't, weren't able to secure, we can't, we're, we're losing money. We're just, money is going out the door and we don't have enough coming back in uh, to cover all the cost. Now, the reason we're doing microgreens, if you recall, is because uh, we have the big heater and uh, in the winter time, the uh, solar panels don't really work all that well, so you need to pay for electricity. So the intent was to use microgreens to pay for the $2,000 bill, uh, $2,000 per month bill for heating and electricity in the winter time. Now our winter starts uh, November 7th. That's the date that we keep track of as the earliest date that it snowed since we've been here. And we've been here for almost eight years now. Uh, so, uh, 
and then it goes all the way through May. So we wanted to use microgreens to fill up the bank account so that in the winter time, we'd still be making money off of microgreens, but we could have had enough money to actually pay for the heating and electricity, which would have allowed us to do all the experimentation with aquaponics. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, there's a fifth thing as well, which is really probably the bigger thing uh, that made us where we're, we're at the shutdown point and why I haven't got a video to you in so long, and that is uh, for those that are brand new to the channel, I, I do all this, uh, the engineering and the building, the maintenance and everything on the weekends and after work, I have a normal full-time job. And that full-time job has really picked up. Uh, I've been working some really long, long days, 12-hour days, uh, 10, 12-hour days pretty consistently. And by the time I get home after my commute, uh, it's, uh, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. And uh, I've also noticed my heart doesn't feel quite right. Uh, and I haven't been exercising. I've put on a lot of weight. So, man, I'm always, I, you know, I'm a little too transparent sometimes, I think, but it's all true. Uh, so my wife and I sat down and we had a really long conversation. It took us about two days, two whole days of whiteboarding and kind of going over what's important, what are our priorities in life and our marriage, uh, our spiritual walk, uh, money, finances, all that type of stuff. And we just came to the conclusion that you know, we need to shut down microgreens for right now. Uh, I think we'll probably be done with it uh, permanently, which means we're actually going to liquidate a lot of stuff in here. All the microgreen stuff that we have, the uh, tables, uh, the tools, everything, a lot, a lot of the, uh, the grow tables and everything that we bought, we're going to sell all those. So if you're local in the Pacific Northwest and you'd like to get your hands on some of the grow tables, they're 12 foot long by 4 feet wide. Uh, we've got the uh, microgreen cutter that we have, uh, some of the stainless steel tables. Uh, we got the refrigerator that we have put in, all that stuff for just microgreens. Uh, we're gonna be selling all those things. So if you're interested, uh, shoot me an email at trm at therealmartian.com. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's been a really tough go here lately, so I apologize for not having, uh, having a video up. Uh, let's talk about where we're going next and uh, what you can expect to see from The Real Martian uh, as we move forward. Well, for starters, we know we can grow stuff in here. Uh, see this thing behind me, man, that's like almost 10 feet tall. Uh, some pretty nice flowers. Got some, uh, some problems with them that we need to learn. Uh, kind of go back to the drawing board and uh, maybe take some classes and stuff about uh, planting. Find somebody to partner with is what we ultimately want to do that's uh, more of a horticulturist or a botanist uh, to really help us understand these things more. Um, some people spend a lifetime figuring it all out and we don't have that time. So next steps, so let's see here. Well, first we gotta winterize. So uh, we're not gonna be turning the big heater on, it costs too much. Uh, so we gotta drain all the hoses and tubes in here, turn off the water to the building, uh, and then that leaves us with the fish. So uh, the fish right now uh, what we're thinking is we're actually going to uh, direct tube a pump uh, to the first bed of every lane and just let the water flow continuously uh, through there uh, with a bell siphon. Just put it back to the bell siphon setup instead of the electronic ones. And what that'll do is it'll allow the water to keep moving through there. And since we did put the water down into the ground where the temperature is 54 degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year, uh, I'm not expecting that water to freeze, and as long as it's not going through a tube and sitting there, uh, we should be able to keep the fish alive through winter. That's the game plan there. Uh, that'll oxygenate the water. It'll be cold in here, so their metabolism will drop. You don't need to feed them as much, uh, and that'll get the fish through winter. What, what we're really doing, though, we're taking the next uh, essentially eight months uh, since winter lasts about half the year here, and going back inside, opening up the computer, getting back to some basic engineering. We've learned a lot through this entire journey uh, about this, uh, the system, which we've uh, since submitted a provisional patent. Uh, it's called the Genesis system is what we, we named it. Uh, that is a Star Trek reference. And so I need to go do all the math to complete the patent application. And then I also, uh, as doing that math, it'll help me refine everything in here. And the big thing that we've learned uh, with some folks from ASU is that we can get rid of the media beds, uh, which will significantly reduce cost uh, of the system and go with a more flexible 
um, tubing system. It's kind of a kind of a U-shaped. Uh, it's just plastic. It's like pond liner, and you run two cables at the top, and then you make it deep enough to where the plants you can actually grow. Uh, potatoes and onions and root vegetables using this method. They've, they've tested it out at ASU in their controlled environment, uh, controlled indoor agricultural program, I think it is. Uh, so we're going to be looking at that design and modifying the system here. Uh, be taking these racks out, moving the cross members up, and then we can actually do quite a bit uh, of work inside of them using this different method. So we're going to play around with that, do some more design work there. Essentially, over the next uh, eight months, it's really just going back and going over all the numbers again. And I've got uh, a, a tool that I use uh, called Cameo Systems Modeler, uh, which actually allows me to go in and model this entire system and do all the math or this thing takes this long to grow, it takes this much light, this much power, produces as many calories, you know, all this type of stuff, how much energy we get from the digester, all those types of things. Uh, we're gonna be going over and just doing the engineering on, just, just back to the drawing board essentially. Now that we have real world experience, we know the numbers, we know everything out of here, uh, we're gonna take that and apply it and get the system uh, designed and get that patent all put in. I will admit that I definitely feel like a failure right now. Uh, from an engineering perspective, you know, the system is not fully operational yet, and that was my goal this year, is to have everything fully operational. Uh, we've grown carrots uh, here. Let's see. Kind of weird looking, but there's an aquaponically grown carrot. That's pretty cool. Um, the lava rock again, so I could do this. Ooh, there's two of them. Look at that, I got two. Um, the aquaponics uh, with the lava rock, they definitely work. Um, you can grow root vegetables in lava rock. Uh, they come out looking a little weird, but they still taste fine. And when you cut them all up, uh, nobody knows any different. We have cooked with it. It's all good. Tastes good. Uh, we still have the problem. All those, I'm not a botanist series. Thank you so much for all your feedback. Uh, we've collected all that information. And over the next few months, we're going to go through all that and figure out what we want to do. We're going to get the water tested. Uh, and see where we're at with that. We know the ammonia is high because we haven't been able to get in there and get the uh, fish poop out yet. That was one of the big things I needed to do. Uh, but we're going to go get the water tested, make sure we know where we're at. I'm pretty sure we're just short iron, like is the major thing. It's what it really looks like. Um, the plants are growing and all that type of stuff. I mean, things look really nice in here. Uh, but there's another little carrot there. See, look at how much growth there is. Uh, I think what that means is there's a ton of nitrogen in the system, which means we don't have enough plants. We have too many fish, uh, and the, the plants are sucking it all up, but we're getting way too much nitrogen. So we got to deal with that. Uh, so basically, we're just going to go through all those notes, all the inputs everyone gave us. We're, we have reached out to a few consultants, and people just won't return our calls. Uh, that was something that people suggested we do, so we did, and uh, I just don't think we're big enough for people to really care about. So already I've uh, shut down the fan, turned off all the lights in here, uh, trying to start getting energy conserved as we uh, start setting up for winter operations. Um, like I said, these beds, uh, when we get next year, the real Martian's not going anywhere. It's just going to be kind of a, uh, some of the stuff I'm doing right now, let's just say it's not really great for YouTube. Uh, but I intend to give you guys updates as we go, hopefully maybe like once a month, let you know what things, uh, where things are at and what we're up to. But the system is essentially going to go into hibernation here, uh, and uh, yeah, it's really actually pretty sad. I'm not very excited about it. So another thing that's happened is that uh, my grandmother's in the hospital as well, so I appreciate your prayers. She's not doing so good, so today we're actually going to be headed up to see her. Uh, she's been in the hospital now four times in the last uh, month, uh, so... Uh, there's just a lot going on in the real Martian's life right now that's taking me away from being able to do all the work out here. Um, let's see here, let's go through all the systems in our head here. The uh, structure is doing great, really happy with the building, happy with the new uh, skylight that we put in this year, happy with the shade cover. We're gonna have to take that down and store it for winter, but that's working really, really well. Um, let's see here, uh, aquaponics. Uh, fish waste is still a problem. We've got to get a, the fish waste out of the system. Now remember, we chose to put the uh, beds, the fish tanks, down in the ground because of thermal. We, um, we wanted to uh, take advantage of the temperature down there. 
to conserve energy both in the winter and in the summertime. If you were to put your fish tanks up high and you're trying to grow rainbow trout, uh, you're going to have to cool that water uh, because all that solar energy coming in is going to get in there. And conversely, in the winter, if it's up high, uh, it's going to be uh, colder, be exposed to more cold air, unless you keep everything in here like totally awesome heated, I guess. Uh, so not that big a deal in the winter. Um, but we got that fish waste down there. So in the next version of the system, uh, if we get rid of the media beds, which act as a filter, then we'll have to put in a mineralization filter uh, to handle the solids and come up with a solution there. And I think, honestly, it's worth doing a trade study. I, I think maybe the, uh, the, the, the drive for aquaponics, the, um, you know, what attracts people to aquaponics is the protein. Uh, it might be just better to have your fish uh, isolated and just raise them by themselves and have the normal filtration system or maybe a partial aquaponics system, but then really emphasize hydroponics everywhere else. Now the key thing, the reason why I say I think there's a trade there, I think, uh, I, think I am going to do a trade study on it, is we, we know that we're missing certain minerals uh, from the system. Now if you're running hydroponics, you're not missing any minerals because you buy your hydroponic solutions that has all the minerals in it for the plants and you're off to the races. Aquaponics is nice because the fish provide a majority of the minerals and nutrition that the plants need if their fish food contains all of those things. And what we're seeing is that the fish food we have isn't high enough in iron. And once we get the water tested, we might find we're missing some other trace nutrients, which means you still have to put other things in the system, which means logistically, you still have to buy and ship and maintain um, supplies to run a system like this. So I think it's worth doing a trade, you know, is it worth having the fish and the headaches that come with the fish, or is it better just to go with the hydroponic solution and deal with the, the logistics of the hydroponic solution? Now, or is there something in, the, in between, which I think might be the right answer, uh, usually is anyway, where you get the protein from the fish and you can do a high density fish colony, um, but you, you're not worried about using that for all the plants, uh, which become suboptimal for the plants. Instead, use a, a hybrid system where you have hydroponics for a majority of your plants, and then maybe for your leafy green vegetables and stuff like that, uh, you're just using the uh, aquaponic water, which we know it works really, really well. Uh, in fact, it works excellent. So some trades there for aquaponics. Also the, the shelving, you know, getting rid of the media beds, going with a different, uh, much lighter, more mobile, uh, more collapsible and expandable type solution, more easily shuffled around and changed uh, solution. As part of that, I'm coming up with a design reference uh, diet. Uh, I actually have four different diets. Uh, by a diet, I mean, you know, like lettuce, um, cauliflower, broccoli, beets, uh, corn, or, you know, whatever, uh, fish, fruit, whatever it is, just different combinations of foods uh, to set as my design points so that I can design the system and look at the sizing and the output of the system based on those design reference diets or DRDs. Uh, so that's part of the work I'm doing in the house, in the lab there uh, with Cameo and modeling that stuff all out uh, using SysML, uh, which is a modeling language. So pretty, pretty cool there, see how that goes. Automation, boy, we've made a lot of progress on automation on the website front, really made some great updates to the website, um, but turning it all off. Uh, got to back up the server, make sure everything's good there, uh, learn how to do a cron job so I can actually back up the server and keep all that code nice and safe so if power surge comes, I don't lose all my work. Uh, so getting that done. Uh, but automation for this version next year will probably look different. Uh, different control systems, different pumps. Uh, we'll see how that all looks. I should be able to reuse all the parts though since it's all Arduino based, easy to reconfigure. Uh, let's see here, uh, fan. Exhaust fan works really, really well. Uh, it just sucks a lot of energy, so we have it all turned off now as we save that. Uh, the digester behind me uh, have not been able to get to the digester at all this year. That is really like the key technology here as part of the Genesis system. Uh, one of the things that we've integrated into this is uh, being able to handle the leftover waste uh, from the system, putting that back in there, as well as take waste from outside the system and put it in there. And uh, I haven't been able to get to it at all. Uh, so that's just going to sit there and be dormant this winter. Uh, what else is there? Uh, let's see. We have the um, 
germination chamber works really, really well. Uh, we learned quite a bit about that. And uh, that's gonna be a key piece of the system going forward. It saves space when you're trying to germinate all your uh, vegetables and everything. You don't wanna use a lot of space. You wanna use as little space as possible and then spread it out as it grows. So uh, we got that going. Uh, overall, I, I really want to be positive because I think we've done a lot. I think we've done a whole lot and we shared it with everybody so you guys can learn from everything that we're doing. Uh, the big failure for us this year is just not being able to make the money uh, to keep this place heated uh, during the winter uh, and running the electricity as well. So like I said, 2,000 bucks a month for a building this size, um, that's just too much. So uh, hindsight being 2020, should we have still gone with this size of building? I think the answer is actually yes. And the reason for it is that this building has taught us about scale and all the challenges that come with scale. If we would have done this very, very small, we would not have learned everything that goes with scaling it up to something this big. And I think that's very important because if you come up with a solution, you want it to scale. And I think this process has taught us how to do that. So yay, positive, uh, but still uh, it really sucks having to turn it off. Um, but God has a plan and I think, you know, I, I'm totally burned out uh, and I, I need to kind of refresh here. So we're gonna take these months, we're gonna do the engineering uh, kind of take our time on that, spend some time with my wife, uh, and really come up with a better game plan for next year so we can really launch into it in a lot more balanced way, uh, a lot more specific approaches as well, things that we really need to test. Um, so, sorry that I haven't been able to get a video up in a while, uh, and this one kind of, there's a lot here, so I apologize for the length of it. It's not one of the quick short ones, so for those of us stuck around, thank you. Um, I will try to get videos up still, uh, so you know how things are going and what's happening, but they're not gonna be very frequent. I think maybe once per month uh, here, so um, sorry about that. Hope you stick with us. Um, thank you to everybody on Patreon uh, who has supported us. Totally understand if you'd like to pull your Patreon support. Uh, really appreciate all your help there. Uh, we're still gonna be moving forward on this. Um, if we could find a way to get the $2,000 per month, we would keep this thing going. But I don't think, uh, I don't think we have enough subscribers uh, to, to get $2,000 a month on a GoFundMe or anything like that. So um, that's going to be tough. So I think this is the game plan going forward. Shut her down for winter. Uh, get in the house. Get in there. Get the engineering all done. And then start coming up with a game plan for... Uh, we're going to sell all the parts, sorry, that we don't need, kind of liquid, liquidate those things, get that cash back in the piggy bank so we can apply it to what we need to do next year. Uh, and then come out of winter, hopefully refresh, rejuvenated. Uh, I'm working out again. Uh, get back into shape, uh, take care of my heart, take care of my body, uh, give my mind a little bit of a break as well, and then come in next year and just really hit it hard again. So really, really thankful for everybody, all your inputs everything that's gotten us here, uh, we're not done. Uh, season two of The Real Martian uh, is essentially coming to an end here, uh, but season three is ahead of us, and uh, I think it's gonna be pretty good. I got some other cool stuff going on in the background. I'll just say that there's some, there's some really good potential and possibilities uh, going forward, and uh, I look forward to uh, letting those deals solidify and uh, being able to share them with you here, hopefully in the not too distant future. So thanks again, everybody. Really appreciate you following along. Uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, video and the update. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Tell your friends about us uh, on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we're also on Patreon if you should still like to do that. Uh, and uh, we'll see you around on YouTube. In the meantime, this is Real Martian, out.